There are a lot of staple essential must-have pieces out there so in today's video I want to talk about the transitional basics that I can see someone having for at least five years in their wardrobe. The pieces I've chosen out today will pretty much work for any style depending on how you wear it. They're really high quality items that are well constructed and they have timeless design that will continue to look fresh and modern after five years. If you're willing to give your wardrobe a little bit of a refresh or update, these are the pieces above anything else that I feel like are worth purchasing because you can wear them with pretty much anything else in your wardrobe. A part of today's video will be in partnership with Brana, who are the perfect people to talk about in today's video. They make really high quality clothing using natural fibers. So there's a lot of cashmere, silk, cotton, and tensils and lyocells as well. I've been ordering from them myself for over five years and pieces like my silk slip from Grana, I've had all that time. The first transitional staple that will easily last five years are these Levi's straight leg jeans. Something in a straight leg, a mid-wash, I think is a really easy go-to that never really dates. Depending on your body shape, you might have a jean style that will work even better than these, but I do feel like a straight leg jean is a classic. The reason why I want to start with jeans today is because they are the perfect example. There is always a trendy or denim style of the season, and then after maybe two or three years, that style becomes a little bit dated. Previously, I remember we had these paper bag waist jeans. We have acid wash, um, jeans with big rips on them. And I just can't say I can see them lasting for five years while still looking really stylish and modern and classic. My top pick for a straight leg jean will be the Levi's ribcage jean and specifically in this color. I own this style in a few different washes and this is by far the most comfortable, the softest because it's a cotton lyocell blend and it makes it incredibly perfect for transitional weather. These are the washes that I feel like are the most classic and my one is on the lighter side but I do live in Australia, it's fairly beachy, and I feel like these suit really well. Through the decades, we've seen how popular jeans are. There's always a particular style of every decade, and I feel like with a straight leg jean, you'll be absolutely fine for the next 5-10 to 10 years. A little bit about Grana now. First up, I have a 30% off code with them if you use Helen30. I don't feel like they used to do this because Trust me, um, in all of my orders, if there was a discount code, I would have definitely found it. I'm going to quickly highlight some Grana pieces, but you will see them throughout the video. Let's start with the knit I'm wearing. This is a 100% cashmere knit. This colorway to me is new. However, I have had cashmere from Grana since five years ago. These are incredibly, incredibly soft, and I've always rated Grana cashmere as incredibly soft, even back five years. I want to show you this skirt, which is a part of the new Supema Poplin range. The hem feel is really, really silky, and I don't normally associate this type of feeling with cotton. This is a really lovely fabric, so if you like shirts and shirt dresses, there's quite a few options in this range. Saving the best for last, some of my favorite pieces from Grana over the last six months has been their silk trousers. I've got a few options here, and it kind of leads me into the next transitional staple. My next staple is a relaxed fit straight leg trouser. Very specific and we've gone for the straight leg again. I feel like these trousers can pretty much be dressed up to go anywhere. You can wear these for work very comfortably. I think they all look very professional as you'll see in the cutaways. Because they're relaxed fit, you can also easily wear it for the weekend with a simple t-shirt. And the main thing here is that you're really comfortable whether you're at work or whether it's the weekend. To make sure your trousers will last at least the five years, I will make sure to choose something in a natural fiber. I really love wool trousers and I think they're a really great all year round piece that also doesn't require a lot of ironing. I also like a really drapey silk trouser because they're really lightweight and comfortable for the warmer months. If you guys were wondering about the durability of silk, silk is actually an incredibly strong material. So you can wear it for years and years and it actually has very good durability. The next thing you'll look out for to make sure they last is that there is some give in the style of the trouser. You want it to still fit you if you go kind of half a size down, half a size up. You want there to be some range. This one has a flat front so it's a bit more flattering but it's got the elastic pattern at the back so you really do have a little bit of flexibility when you're in between sizes. This trouser here has the hooks and the zip, but you've also got these buttons at the back, um, if you can see that. 
that allows you to adjust the waistband ever so slightly. The black and the brown you see are both made from 100% silk, and this taupe coloured pair is made from tencel. Because I make videos, I do have a few options of trench coats in my wardrobe, but I feel like if you have one good trench coat, you're kind of set. Every time I see a trench coat, I think of that incredibly iconic scene with Audrey Hepburn, and I just feel like an item has been able to stay relevant for the last, what, 60 years? Um, it's going to last in my wardrobe for much longer than five. One of the things that I really recommend looking out for is colour. Trench coats can range in colour quite a bit. There's this traditional warmer shade that I feel like is very popular, and this is probably what I think of the most when I think of trench coats. The one that I'm wearing, you can tell, is less yellow. It's a little bit more neutral and maybe slightly cooler in comparison. They also range in depth, so you've got some really light coloured ones and then some darker ones. I really love all trench coats, but I have a slight preference for something that is a little bit more neutral in colour, so it will match with everything. I also like my trench coats to be medium to dark, because I find them more practical to wear in the rain, it doesn't get dirty, and a little bit more low maintenance. My biggest trench coat recommendation is just to look for a style that you can layer over almost all of your clothing. You want to be able to put it over your chunky knits, not just your really light ones. You want it to be really comfortable over even a blazer or a jacket as well. The darker colors are also much less likely to get a stain on them. And if you have a good trench coat, it can easily be worn five to 10 years. If you like these trench coats, I will have a link to them in the description box below as well as anything else in the video. And if you're looking for something a little bit more accessible, so maybe end of a stories, I will also link some of my favorite ones down below as well. I've been tossing up for the next category, deciding between knitted cardigans or stripe knits. I knew this category had to be knitwear because I think quality knitwear easily lasts a very long time. The secret to this is choosing something in a natural fiber and then if you're sensitive to wool, you can do blends and then even cotton knits will last a long time. The second secret is that you go get yourself a cashmere comb. You can use it for all of your knits and it gets rid of any pilling. I have quite a few of these in my drawer in my wardrobe and these come in so handy when you want a sweater um, that has a lot of peeling to look new again. Third tip is definitely that you don't wash it too much. If you hang it in your bathroom while you're taking a shower, the steam will actually, um, I guess, clean it. And put it outside, let it air out, um, and there are just so many ways to freshen up a sweater without needing to wash it frequently. With stains and spills, I just spot clean as needed. Onto why I've chosen stripes. The stripe print has been worn for hundreds of years, and then at least in the last hundred years, um, it's been fairly consistent, I feel. And I got a thing that if it's lasted for a hundred years, it will definitely be okay for the next kind of 10, even like 20 as well. I've seen stripes being styled in a really maximalist way, mixing it with other prints. I know from Instagram that they are a minimalist uh, dream. Everyone who's minimal seems to wear stripes. They can be styled in that really effortless, you know, French girl style vibe. And I feel like the styling is just endless. So even if you were to um, decide you have completely different style, these would still work and work really well. In my own wardrobe, this cotton Cezanne Leontine knit I've had for about three years. I don't feel like I've ever tucked it away. It's constantly on rotation. This Cezanne James knit is one I reach for in the winter, super thick and cozy. And in the winter months, I reach for this a lot more than this. This is the Max Mara Grey knit. I found this like heavily discounted and it's super soft and just a different color combo. These accessory staples I'm sharing with you today are not just for the transitional season, they're for all year round, but I do still wear them autumn and spring. So I want to talk about some chunkier gold jewelry. This is one I'm excited to share because since I was 18 years old, I've been wearing chunky gold hoops and then your chunky statement gold jewelry. In the last couple of years, chrome and silver has actually come back a little bit, but even in that time, I feel like gold is still my go to. It makes an otherwise average outfit feel more styled and like there's more intention and thought that's gone into it. I'm going to show some images here of outfits I love that have gold jewelry, but you'll see me do this in pretty much all of my outfits. There's always a little statement gold earring or necklace somewhere in the look. The gold piece I've been wearing the most in the last couple of years have been these Pamela Card gold hoops. 
You see me wear these quite often and they are a go-to right now. One of my most worn necklaces would be this longer necklace with this circular pendant. I wear this one more often than my other ones because it sits a little bit lower. And because I've got big earrings already, I don't want anything too high. A little bit lower feels more balanced. I have these chunky gold hoops and I've owned them for a few years now. I wear these all the time. And then this is the other hoop that I like to wear. A little bit slimmer, but a little bit larger. Just looking at these outfits make me love gold jewelry even more. And I really feel like so many transitional outfits or even year round outfits are completed by nice chunky gold jewelry. A piece of clothing that's appeared in every single Staples video I've done is a cashmere or merino crew. One of my favorite options has always been the Uniqlo merino knits. And then you can go fancier to something from Cezanne in merino. And then you've got your cashmere options as well from Grana. A cashmere knit is one of those pieces in your wardrobe that you can wear as a base layer almost every single day if you wanted to. And still be able to create completely different looks every day. You can layer things over it, wear it alone, pair it with different accessories and get yourself a bunch of different outfits. It's also the ultimate luxury piece because you feel amazing wearing it. It's really comfortable and really warm. I feel like I can look at a cashmere sweater and know that it's cashmere because it always looks very fine, very luxurious and it just looks fluffy as well. One of my first videos ever was about comparing cashmere sweaters. I really love cashmere sweaters because I don't feel like they're very high maintenance and it can last for longer than five years easily. A lot of times I watch videos where people go thrifting and they find amazing outerwear, whether that's a cool blazer or just a jacket. So I think that really shows that if you buy a good jacket, it will last you much longer than five, and I think maybe even more than 10 years if it's good quality. This is a pre loved leather jacket that I purchased while in Paris. This is made from a leather material, so I feel like if I look after it, you can probably have this for forever. I'm always hearing about people finding amazing oversized blazers in a nice wool. So if you can do that, then that will last you so many years. And outerwear for me is always worth it because it lasts. Another wardrobe staple I feel like I've probably been talking about for at least 3-4 years are midi skirts. This is one area of my wardrobe that I feel quite confident purchasing for. I know that if it's a midi maxi length in a colour and shape I like, it will be something that I will hold on to for a long time. Even as my style has evolved, I talk about this quite often, a mini skirt has stayed a part of my essentials all that time. Because I've worn it in the last five years, I'm really confident to say that this will be an item in my wardrobe for the next five. This will really be on a hanger, but I really like these plain skirts made from a silky or viscose fabric. Especially if it's bias cut, I just find that it glides and it drapes really, really elegantly. This is another piece I've had for a long time, and these are all tried and tested, and I'm also just excited to continue wearing them for the next, you know, many years. I keep referring to the past today, but women have been wearing pearl jewelry since 420 BC. So with that in mind, I can definitely see myself wearing pearls in my lifetime. And I want to show you some of the pearls that I've collected over the years. The first piece is this very classic pearl necklace. This was one of my earliest purchases. I think I was 14. I was working at my first job at McDonald's and this was one of the things I splurged on a little. These are freshwater pearls. They're knotted between each bead. This I remember was from a handmade market and it's definitely more on the classic traditional side of things. This is an example of an earring that you may have seen me wear on my channel and I pull it out pretty frequently over the last maybe three years. I've got the ones I'm wearing today, they also feel a bit more modern. First thing, the hoop has like a texture to it and then the pearl is also very irregular. This is another example of a pearl necklace where the pearls are very irregular. We've also got some kind of cast pearls made from gold at the top and this just has a more contemporary look to it. Um, if your style is maybe less conservative, less traditional, this can be a really great alternative to the other round ones, which I think are more timeless, classic, elegant, and these just feel a little bit more fun than modern. This pearl jacket is from the last year. You may have seen me wear these quite often. They're very simple, but I've always liked the year jacket, and they do remind me of the Dior earrings with the pearl, and I just think it's a very modern take on a pearl earring. 
The ultimate transitional footwear for me are loafers. I have collected a few pairs now and all of them I feel like have gone into some serious rotation. Well, other than my newest pair, but the other two have been heavily worn since I've gotten them. The first pair of loafers I wear a lot are these Massimo Duty black loafers. These ones have a very subtle square toe design, um, but I don't find the square toe too clunky. I do find them quite wearable. I like these because they have a slimmer look to them, and I also feel like they slightly taper in at the front, giving them more of an elongated look. These are my most comfortable loafers. These are from Todd's. They're in a brown suede, which makes them super, super comfortable to walk in. I think it's a mixture of the suede material, but also the fact that these have a little bit more cushioning on the sole. I wear these often. I feel like they're really good quality. They have a very kind of substantial sole, and I can see myself wearing them for a long, long time. My newest pair from Cezanne, they're in this really beautiful raspberry red color. I also like these ones because I find them really comfortable. I can walk in them a lot. And the color obviously gives any neutral look um, a pop of color. In terms of styling, I feel like I used to have a lot of boots, a lot of sandals, and kind of nothing in between. So having these loafers just gives me something to wear in that transitional season but you can also wear them most of the time in summer and winter. In the past, not all of my shoes have lasted five years, but these things I feel like help. Firstly, it's so that your shoes fully air out. So don't wear a shoe every single day. Try to rotate every second day. This allows the shoe to fully dry between wears and it will help it last longer. Something I look for is that the sole of the shoe extends out further than the upper. And the reason for this is that I feel like I get far less scuffs and markings on the shoe itself and therefore it lasts longer. If your shoe has a leather sole, and especially if it has a very thin leather sole, I definitely recommend getting rubber soles put on immediately. It will really prolong the life of the shoe. And then if your sole kind of wears down, you can definitely get that replaced. Um, at your local cobbler. Those were all of my transitional staples, wardrobe staples that I feel like will easily last five plus years. A huge thank you to Grana for working with me in today's video. If there is something that you're interested in checking out, I have my 30% off code if you use Helen30. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more, I make weekly videos over on my YouTube channel. I have a newly launched website, which I'll link down below. And you can also say hi to me over on Instagram. I've been off this week sick, but I post there very frequently. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your week and I'll see you next one. Bye.